Welcome to Continuous Testing Live. We're broadcasting from the offices of CA Technologies here in Santa Clara. I'm Eric O'Dell and I'm the Director of Continuous Testing Solutions Marketing. We're talking about how continuous testing makes your apps rock. And today, I have a few guests with me. Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Rafael Botbol. I'm a performance tester, domain expert in BlazeMeter. And I'm Sofia Palomarchuk, I'm CEO at Abstracta, and we are CA Partners. Great, I'm glad to have you both with us today. And I just wanted to ask, start off with a couple of questions. How does shift left testing relate to continuous testing? What are the differences? What are the mm. nuances? So, thanks for asking, Eric. Um, continuous testing is actually uh, the idea of we test throughout the entire software development lifecycle. Mm -hmm. Shift left, it's actually supporting that. If in the old waterfall uh, days, we had like, testing done only after the code was done and we are ready to deploy, so let's do some testing. Uh, this obviously created a lot of friction. Mm -hmm. So shift dev is actually stretching that all the way to the developers and allowing the developers to own the application and be able to get a better code, a more quality code, uh, faster. And yeah. then you can focus on the business case and have the performance test actually integrated into the CI, CD, and uh, etc. All right, so we're hearing a lot of talk about shift left testing. Not sure if everybody's really doing it yet. Uh, not sure that even everybody understands the definition of it. But, mm -hmm. you know, really, what are the challenges, first off, in implementing a shift left testing strategy? Yeah, for me, it's, uh, the main thing is the cultural change needs to happen inside the organization. Mm -hmm. uh, so what I've seen, I, I, I talk with a lot of clients and they want, I really want to do this. I know everyone is talking about shifting left testing, but you know, it's hard for us. Mm -hmm. We have a big team, they all have their own way of working, and how can we actually make this happen? So the cultural change needs to happen from the inside. Mm -hmm. Usually it's the manager and you know, the rest of the team, and they get together and they say like, okay, this is where it's happening, this is what we need to do. Right. And then you start thinking about you know, skills. Do we need to hire more people? Do we need our developers to start testing more? What tools do we need for this shift to exactly. happen? And then you start like figuring out like the small pieces. But first is mm -hmm. making sure everyone is aligned. And so, Rafael, I know that you talk to a lot of customers have a lot of mm -hmm. fortune 500 companies in fact you know uh, you know the testing used to be held in one place it was the testing coe you know testing center of excellence that was managing all the testing how are they responding to this new shift the shift left and then also how are developers in these large organizations responding <sighs> yeah so um when you, if you get the time to speak to a center of excellence guy, they usually they don't have time because they're extremely busy. They need to write the test. Everybody are like leeching on them. Like we need to do, go to development, uh, sorry, to deployment. They, we need to release that as fast as we can. So actually, when we talk with them and them sh they're already in the shift that hey, we need help. We need to add more people. They're happy because right now we allowing them to shift some of their work to the developers on the functional right. level. They had to do all the testing, right? So if you need to do all the testing, you're always chasing your developers. So <clears throat> now they can focus on business cases. They can work with product. They can work on business cases that they have never implemented before because they simply didn't have the time. Meanwhile, they're becoming some kind of a coaches to the developers. And let's take another from another realm. Let's talk about security, your developers, right? If you need to do penetration testing, you're not expecting your developers to do that. What you will do, you'll bring your you know, chief of security and his guys, or you'll just go to a, con a third party and you bring them in and, mm -hmm. hey, do penetration testing. But your developers want to write a secured code. Same thing happened in testing. Sure. So center of excellence are becoming coaches. They're teaching developers and how to write better code, less bugs. In the meanwhile, they also have a huge responsibility of making sure that the performance testing is being done and not as an afterthought. And Sophia, your thoughts on this? How are testing teams beginning to respond? It's changing to this? the way the, the teams are being uh, separated now. So you have mm -hmm. more agile teams. We're talking mm -hmm. about yeah. seven to eight people in the team. Developers are also taking ownership of the testing. So that's good. So the the team that was originally that uh, in charge of the QA and testing, now they are spreading and they're making sure that you know everyone follows the same process, but still you are free to you know choose what tools you want. Developers are right. owning part of the testing <laughs> and they are you know they're still that uh, central QA team, but it's more like spread now. It's democratizing right. I guess the testing. Right. Now I've done a, some surveys recently, uh, some third party sur surveys and we found that fifty two percent of enterprises are looking to leave legacy performance testing solutions and they're looking now to open source. Mm -hmm. Do we have any ideas why 
of these enterprises? Why are these development teams and practitioners beginning to say, we need to switch to open source? There are a lot of benefits of open source. The first one is the flexibility that these tools actually allow you and how mature these solutions are today. Maybe in the past we were thinking about open source as, as tools that developers will play around and maybe they will work in their own machine, you know, mm -hmm. locally. Mm -hmm. But then now we have all these companies that are building solutions sure. for enterprise on top of open source. So there's more uh, confidence on these tools right now. And it gives flex flexibility for anyone in the team to learn very fast how to use them. You don't right. need to count on some specialist experts to be able to run these tools. So I think that it provides like a lot of benefits and makes it possible to shift left. Any further thoughts on that, Rafael? Yeah, so um, if you go to a developer and they have any issue or a challenge they need to do, what they will do, they will Google something, right? They will right. do like, a, how do I run that, that test or do something like that? And guess what? It's much easier frictionless, no procurement, to just go download an open source and experience with that tool and understand, oh yeah, it's actually fulfilled my needs, so mm -hmm. I'll start using that. And by the way, which company is behind that open source? And then you can, okay, they can support me if I need that. If I need to do that shift, right. I can just go to them and ask for their expertise. I don't need to do everything on my own because I don't have time for that. Um, and another thing about open source, it's a shift of mentality. Mm -hmm. It's different when you understand that you're part of something that is growing in the internet. Uh, yes, somebody is moderating right. it, but you, when you have a challenge and you solve it and now you have com you committed that code, you're, you have a recognition. This is something that will always follow with you. It will be in your GitHub uh, and you actually made life better for people. You okay. can even share best practices, yeah, what it worked for you, what mm -hmm. it worked for our company. So actually part of a community, you have support, you have company like ours that can come in and help you implement sure. this solution and then you're just on your own. So you don't need to be, you know, engaged or attached to right, right. someone there. So what are the shortcomings that we see in open source? So, yeah, that's a good question. Uh, usually open source is focusing when everything is running on your, you know, laptop or like a small environment. Mm -hmm. Um, when you need enterprise features such as a single sign-on or moderation or the right. segregation of duties, you need to scale to you know a huge amount of machines to be and actually implement it as part of like any other enterprise feature. Sure. Th then you have a problem with those open source. Lazmeter started with JMeter. What was the problem that we solved at the beginning? Is that hey people had a lot of time invested in getting to one million virtual users. And we already know how to do that, so just let's have that for them. And really, you could just upload your script, and we will figure out everything yeah. for you. Yeah. So, um, so you know, uh, we, we d we've already talked about the, no the organizations that are leaving uh, legacy systems, and they're shifting to open source, but this isn't as easy as it seems, is it? True. Uh, it's like moving from Android to iPhone, or iPhone to Android, and yeah. we want to be fair with everyone. Or, or, uh, you what are know, the complications in, in shifting over? So you have a lot of assets, right? You have like uh, scripts, let's say a load runner, you have a lot of scripts there. You now need to go and convert them to open source, let's say JMeter or Selenium, something like that. And it's going to take you a lot of time at the beginning. Um, so for example, company like us, what we did, it, technically it's like open source DNA. We thought about it, we saw that, and we uh, addressed the market with that by having like a load runner converter, mm. which allows you to just move from load runner to JMeter or Selenium. And uh, of course, it's not like 100%, but the idea is that if you need to you know, transfer like 100 scripts, then if you get like 70% of each script done, right. then you have a lot of work that's been done for you. You need to adjust those you know, 30% more and then be done with it and just get, and once you're in open source, you can do whatever you want. Now, I understand that this script converter uh, was launched, what, uh, about six months ago. Yeah. We've seen a lot of people coming in to, to convert their scripts. How fast, how quickly does this occur? Uh, every day we get people asking us, hey, we need you, uh, can you support that? Can you do that for but us? But how long does it take to convert a script? Uh, a matter of minutes. Minutes. Top. Yeah. yeah. Matter a minute or two. All right. A minute or two. Well, you know what? I want the both of you to stick around because what I'd like you to do is give us a demonstration of this script converter. And if you'd like to check it out, I want you to go right now to shiftleft.blazemeter.com. That's shiftleft dot blazemeter.com and you can find out for yourself you can upload your legacy uh, view gen or true client scripts and convert these into jmeter and selenium in just minutes we're going to show that to you in the next video so stay tuned <laughs>